people to join. And we will start more or less in five minutes. Uh, for those who is joining, uh, you're welcome, and uh, we start in two minutes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Felix, hello. It's uh, nice to see who is joining. Uh, I see here a guest from uh, Hungary, from India, from uh, Czech Republic, from uh, Serbia, and from Ukraine, of course. I am uh, hope uh, more people will join on the way. And also some people are looking at us from uh, 
in uh, other channels like um, uh, Facebook translation. So uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, today we will talk about uh, healthy winter crops. We will uh, tell you about the technologies, uh, biotechnologies which we have for, for these crops, our experience uh, with them. We will discuss uh, frequently asked questions about uh, these technologies. Uh, but besides that, I would uh, introduce in a short way uh, the situation on uh, the cereals market with winter crops, some uh, predictions uh, by fire, etc. So uh, probably most of people who join us know who we are. So I just tell few words about the BTU Center. So BTU Center is a family company. We are 23 years old and uh, our core business is uh, biological products for agriculture. You can see uh, the photos from our production of, and of our team on this slide. Uh, we also patent a brand of uh, healthy land in different languages because we do care about uh, health of uh, soil and uh, especially in its uh, biological properties. So for this, we provide products uh, which uh, improve fertilization which uh, do stimulation of plants in biological way, which uh, actually improve soil uh, properties and also some biopesticides. We use them in uh, conventional technologies and organic. And we also propose them not only for farmers, but for people to use at home as well. Uh, so we have more than 60 products. Most of them are certified in organic. We are present with them in uh, mainly in East Europe countries. And uh, we also have a team of uh, scientists who do a lot of research uh, with our products, more than uh, like few thousands uh, trials uh, in total. And uh, products are applied on more than 10 million hectares already. Uh, but coming closer to the topic, uh, you can see here that uh, I will show you better the figures I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, so in total, uh, production of uh, cereals this year is uh, predicted to decrease in comparison to uh, previous year. You can see also here the regional distribution of uh, this uh, prognosis. So in Asia, it's uh, more or less uh, end up with growth. In Africa, there is some uh, decrease in production. The same for Central America. There is a good increase of uh, the harvest in the uh, South America, which compensates some losses on other markets. And there is uh, quite a big uh, decrease of uh, production in uh, Europe. And uh, one of the reasons is actually uh, Russian aggression on uh, Ukraine, which limits uh, possibilities of uh, grains production and export, uh, which have influence on all of the world. So about this, we will talk additionally. But also we see a serious decrease of production in uh, Okeania uh, states. Uh, but in general, we see that there is a decrease, uh, which is uh, more or less less than uh, 20 million tons. And uh, it's uh, well, near half, well, uh, 0.6% uh, comparing to previous year. Uh, also, if we take into account the general uh, trends of uh, production of uh, cereals. You can see also that uh, for next year, it's predicted that uh, uh, production of cereals will have slight uh, decline in comparison to uh, these in previous years. And uh, the utilization uh, keeps some growth. So uh, this year, probably we would uh, uh, utilize uh, more than produce, so some stocks uh, would uh, decrease. Uh, if we take a look on the European market, uh, the, we can see that uh, winter uh, cereals uh, areas are estimated uh, more or less on the level of previous year, but with a bit uh, increase. And about the rapeseed, it's uh, predicted to be more or less 5.5 uh, million uh, hectares. And uh, conditions during this winter are predicted to be uh, mainly favorable for growing of uh, these crops. As for spring cereals, we see that uh, there is a bigger growth prediction of uh, areas 
uh, with these uh, crops and especially with uh, spring wheat and uh, spring barley and uh, maize as well. So talking about uh, Ukraine, uh, this year conditions in which uh, our farmers work, but not only them, but today we talk about agriculture are quite uh, <laughs> challenging, difficult. It's uh, difficult to find the work, but uh, still, uh, Ukrainian farmers continue work and uh, continue uh, feed uh, the world. And uh, I just uh, find few uh, examples, right, in uh, which conditions uh, harvesting campaign is uh, going. So there are rockets in the fields and bombs, uh, some uh, techniques is uh, lost, uh, some lives uh, are lost, uh, military actions are nearby. And uh, we have a lot of uh, examples when uh, farmers uh, harvest the fields uh, which are burning, which are, bomb are being bombed. So yeah, uh, conditions are really not easy, but still uh, Ukrainian farmers, as Ukrainian peoples are brave and uh, continue, uh, continue what they do for their life. Uh, talking more about the figures, uh, very important topics for the last uh, months was uh, topic of uh, some kind of agreement uh, when a few Ukrainian ports are unblocked. And indeed, uh, we can see that uh, in figures of main uh, crops uh, which are exported, uh, they increase uh, during August. And in general, during August, uh, nearly uh, 4 million uh, tons of uh, grains were exported from Ukraine. It's less than uh, we exported before the war, because we, before we exported uh, nearly 6 million tons. And uh, nearly half of it was exported uh, through uh, unblocked ports. It was more or less like 1.5 uh, millions of uh, tons. Uh, in general, you can see that uh, mainly Ukraine export uh, agro production via ports also part of that is going through the railway and smaller part uh, with uh, automobiles uh, in terms of the distribution uh, through the cultures main uh, crops which are exported uh, till now uh, during this year is corn after that go go uh, wheat sunflower sunflower oil rapeseed shrots uh, soybeans and barley so we um, believe that uh, export of Ukrainian grains will continue and uh, which would uh, decrease uh, crisis in uh, agriculture in the uh, region, especially in Africa, in uh, Europe as well. Uh, but it's important to understand that uh, in Ukraine, it's uh, predicted uh, that stocks of, uh, no, we, we will get uh, soon uh, more or less nearly uh, 60 70 million tons of uh, grains both from the previous year and harvested uh, this year and the uh, dynamics of export uh, is uh, not so huge uh, to be able uh, to export all of this uh, at least till the end of the agreement because it's like as i as far as i remember for four months uh, more or less in uh, september it's predicted that ukraine will export another five million tons of uh, grains uh, still what is important is that uh, Prices for grains are still uh, very high. Uh, probably they will remain high for the next uh, year because, uh, as I showed, uh, uh, it is predicted that uh, there will be less uh, production of uh, grains. And uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, that's important to plan your uh, uh, sowing campaign to plan your technologies and to plan uh, what you can do to get maximum uh, yields uh, to also have a small but influence on this uh, uh, agro sphere uh, stability uh, in these conditions. Uh, so today we will talk about uh, more not about the politics and uh, industry in general, but about the technologies. Uh, in a moment, I will give a word to my colleague. So, uh, why we uh, want what we want to share with you? We want to share with you our experience uh, because, uh, as I told, we do hun hundreds and thousands of trials. If we talk about winter crops, it's uh, 
more than uh, 200 trials only in uh, winter wheat and uh, winter rapeseed with uh, farmers in Ukraine. It does not include our research on uh, uh, made by our, by our own and research by, on the research stations, uh, which is, I think, uh, could be another more than 100 trials. And also we already gained some uh, uh, experience on uh, international uh, market, uh, mainly in uh, East Europe, uh, like in uh, Germany, in uh, Slovakia, in uh, other states. So uh, we would be would have a pleasure to share this uh, experience with you. Uh, so now I give a word to uh, my colleague Alexander, and we will switch to uh, to the topic uh, of uh, uh, soil. So uh, today we will talk about a uh, few, uh, few directions. We will talk about work with soil, improving its uh, nutrition uh, properties and biological properties. We will talk about seeds, uh, how to improve germination, improve uh, nutrition also of the seeds and uh, increase potential of uh, your plants. And then also we will talk a bit about the uh, phases, about the vegetation of uh, winter crops during autumn and what is important and uh, what can we, how we can help uh, plants to grow during this time. So, uh, Alexander, you are here? Yes, yes. Uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, I do. Okay, so um, we will start with the most uh, popular product from BTU Center, it's Ecostern. So uh, the preparation uh, by itself is uh, uh, um, uh, preparation for the accelerating and of the composition of crop residues, in particular to uh, difficult one to decompose like sunflower residues and corn. So the preparation uh, basically has uh, a complex of uh, microorganisms based on, on fungi and uh, bacteria, uh, which uh, together creates the best solution to accelerate the decomposition of, of residues in, in your field. So in functions, uh, the basic functions of this pr preparation is uh, yeah, of course decomposition of residues, also enrichment of organic matter. Uh, uh, I will show you some, some cases uh, in the next slides. Uh, and uh, one of the important things is neutralization of uh, allelochemicals or phytotoxicity from previous crops. So uh, the title of the product is uh, starting from 2.5 uh, in, uh, to 10 uh, billion uh, colonial forming units uh, per centimeter cubic. Uh, so the shelf life of the product, uh, the, the product has several uh, two formulations, um, uh, which is uh, which can be impacted by, by uh, the storage conditions. So for the first case, it's uh, um, we see that uh, the product can be stored 12 months at 4 to 10 degree. Uh, in, in if we increase the the degree, so the storage conditions uh, changes. And for the VP formulations, it's, it can be stored up to 24 months from 4 to 15. So uh, how to apply the product? So the basic message is blowing the skin uh, and cultivation. So the product uh, has to uh, go or has, has to be applied into the soil. And we see the different uh, uh, application rates and uh, it, of course, this rate depends on the uh, uh, what what kind of or, or type of residues you have on the field. So sometimes it is recommends to to add some uh, little amount of nitrogen, like from from fifty from five to fifteen kilograms per hectare. And yeah, can, next slide, please. Uh, so basically, uh, now at the season of. Ecostern, I would say the season of Ecostern, we have uh, lots of questions from our partners abroad, uh, like how to check the, uh, the structure of work uh, in one, two months, as, uh, how, what, what does the type of soil affect the destruction, because there are lots of questions about, about activity of microorganisms in uh, like Chernozem, in dry, uh, in gray uh, soil type, etc. Uh, compatibility with, with other products, as we know that uh, farmers also uh, 
uh, in plant mix uh, mix uh, some products with um, stimulate stimulators stimulators uh, biofertilizers and also how to increase the efficiency of destruction as we want to uh, sow for example the winter wheat in the next month uh, so basically some of this question we will uh, touch uh, in the next slides and uh, other questions you can ask uh, at the end of the webinar so the first uh, slide how to check the destruction the destructor work so we can uh, see some changes in structure of plant residues of course when we went to the, when we go to the field take uh, a piece of uh, uh, corn residues for example and uh, try to smash it uh, and feel the how it's easy to um, destroy these residues by using uh, ecosystem also we see that the uh, um, the color of of the field itself because the destructor because the ecosystem can improve the soil conditions also uh, to help to uh, accumulate more uh, humic uh, humic uh, compounds which is uh, take part of the uh, of the soil structure and also we see uh, how the changes in uh, plant development in the color and also uh, in the yield increased at the end. We also can test the product efficiency in lab by laboratory methods, uh, by selecting uh, and weighting the of plant residues, by uh, checking the uh, changes between saprotrophic uh, organisms and and other in in the soil. Uh, in the soil, and also by uh, by indicating some biometric. Uh, parameters uh, of the field and product quality. So on this slide, uh, I will touch uh, the question about the soil type. We can see on the left, uh, bottom left side of the, uh, of the screen, uh, the degree of destruction of plus residues, which depends on kind of soil, which is the most efficient um, uh, type of soil to de de decompose the residues is chernozem soil and less efficient is podzolic one. And but the uh, rate of application is uh, one liter and a half per hectare because uh, probably it will be it was a, um, a corn residues uh, uh, on this test. So we see also how the structure impact this, uh, this respiration of, of soil. Um, by uh, by by its intensity, and also we see um, as the influence of organic matter dynamic with use of ecostern. It was a, a field and laboratory experience which showed us that during the from 2011 to 2013, uh, the decrease of uh, humic compounds in the soil increased, which helps to 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 calculate the, the total um, uh, the humus. Is increased basically, so we see this uh, um, dynamic, and we we are happy that the product uh, helps to recover the soil by by this way. Also, we see that the soil density depending of application of ecostern uh, per crop rotation. So by destroying the the by uh, uh, controlling of destruction of plant residues on the field, we have less. Um, density on the upper soil, upper layer of soil on the field. So is the ecosystem effective in arid regions? So basically, uh, we already uh, told in our previous webinars that uh, some uh, products requires uh, a little bit of, of moisture to, to accelerate uh, or to uh, to have a full power uh, of decomposition. Uh, basically, in uh, arid regions, the decomposition of, of uh, residues is also going uh, quite well, depending uh, of the type of uh, soil, soil cultivation, I would say. So the most effective way is tillage uh, of the uh, plant residues on the field, because we cover the residues uh, with a layer of soil. and uh, the, or, the microorganisms, uh, the, the bacteria and fungi, 
uh, in the product are mostly living in the soil. So it's the perfect uh, way how to mix it uh, with residues and, uh, in, and accelerate uh, the processes. And uh, we see that uh, less, a little bit less efficient way to deep surface tillage and shallow subsurface tillage with a rate of application uh, one liter and a half. Reactor. Yeah. So we also uh, tested the, um, some microorganisms, uh, specific microorganisms of the product by freezing uh, of fungi trichoderma for 15 days at uh, minus 18 degree. And we see that this product is quite um, strong depending of the, uh, of the dynamic of the temperature uh, and can work uh, even uh, when it's when the temperature in the winter time is uh, less than 18. So this, this what I want to summarize that the product uh, that the microorganism ha has a quite good dynamic between temperature and uh, their efficiency. Alexandra here just wanted to add that uh, in this test the main uh, uh, indicator was uh, survival of uh, fungi uh in frost so in uh, of course in uh, on like uh, negative temperature fungi didn't grow but uh, after freezing for half of the months uh, and uh, coming back to normal uh, conditions uh, uh, we have seen uh, growth of uh, fungi which means that they survive during winter so uh, you can apply it uh, in the late autumn and uh, early spring as soon as uh, temperature is positive it's it will work again so let's move on. So then uh, one of the most, uh, one of the question was about the compatibility of uh, EcoStern with other products or fertilizers. And one of them is uh, urea ammonium nitrate, SOG2. So we have tested uh, several, um, we have several variants with uh, uh, EcoStern and uh, other products from the center. And for example, we can uh, have a look at the variant two, uh, three, and, and five, uh, which are uh, where we basically uh, have more experience in trials uh, and then compatibility in tank mixes. And for the variant one, we see that uh, during two to six hours of, uh, of mixed in tank um, uh, reservoir, we see that the uh, solution is homogeneous and uh, there is no uh, uh, precipitations. Uh, if you do take a look at the variant three, when we mixed uh, ECOSTEM uh, with uh, uh, urea ammonium nitrate and plus uh, our other products, Clerocyte, which contains also some fungi, we see that uh, the product uh, products together with the bio with fertilizers mixed uh, well. Uh, they have a homogeneous uh, solution with a stable color <coughs> and uh, uh, some little uh, particles, uh, micro particles uh, on the bottom. So which are not blocking uh, the uh, sprayer. And the uh, variant five also uh, show us uh, uh, also, the, the, the same story as in the two previous one. The, the solutions are homogeneous, and only some little particles can can be uh, seen on the bottom of the um, tested uh, reservoir. So we, here we see more uh, pr precisely uh, if we uh, filtrate uh, the solution through the net or through the filter in the, in the sprayer we see that uh, basically uh, there is no uh, sludge, uh, no uh, big particles or uh, fungi, you know, mycelium uh, growing uh, here or uh, stuck in the net. So we see the, that only some little uh, like uh, particles and uh, the solution are basically homogeneous. There is even no color, uh, no residues left. Uh, uh, except uh, variant five, where we see some little uh, brown uh, see, film uh, on the net, but it's not a, a particles. It's just a uh, some, I would say colorful, colorful uh, so 
how to say it correctly. Maybe you can help me. Uh, yes. So what will happen? What will happen uh, to the residues if plot without using Z destruct? Um, so basically, we can just have a look at the first uh, variant when we use nitrogen fertilizers without destructor. So the positive, uh, what we can see in the field is that the composition of uh, crop residues is accelerated. But uh, we have to see uh, and we have to understand that the story is not finished because by using the pure nitrogen to, dis to destroy the residues, we have a risk of infection of the next crop uh, in the crop rotation with root and other pathogens in the first stages of vegetation as we basically feed uh, the, all the microorganisms on the field uh, pathogen supertrophic one and as we know the pathogens are the most active um, in uh, by uh, when we use a um, how to say when we when we not control them uh, Low the stable, the stubble is the second variant. When we see uh, that uh, basically we have a destruction, mechanical destruction of the plant residues on the field. Uh, also, we can expect that some uh, basic natural microorganisms will uh, work on the composition. Uh, but it takes, uh, for the negative moment, it takes up to three years to decompose these residues in the field. And also, um, uh, during the decomposition of cloth straw, uh, the carbon contained in the residues is transformed into methane, uh, but not into carbon dioxide, which is necessary for microorganisms to live. And uh, so the, the, the conditions for plants are not uh, favorable to live, to grow. So uh, the third variant is leave the stable on, on the stubble on the surface. Basically, it's not a Good idea if maybe if you are doing a uh, no-till te technology. Uh, yes, of course, for, for, for you, this is the uh, best option. But uh, in case of uh, traditional farming, the crop residues uh, are accumulate the pathogen and pests on the field, uh, fix uh, some nutrients uh, upper than the soil level, and uh, also they have a they can cause some phytotoxicity uh, by uh, the previous crop. And uh, what we have when we treat uh, the soil, uh, when, the, when we treat the plant residues uh, with uh, our uh, destructor. So the decomposition of residues is accelerated by at least two times. Uh, we have uh, increased the amount of uh, beneficial uh, uh, microorganisms, uh, microflora by 26% on average across the farms. We, have, uh, imp we can improve the soil structure by uh, um, creating the uh, conditions to destroy residues and uh, make the soil less dense. Uh, also, we can impact the uh, yield of the crop uh, in additional profit. For example, an average indicator for corn is uh, almost half a ton per hectare. For sunflower is 300 kilograms, for wheat 400 kilograms, and for soybeans 300 kilograms uh, can be uh, obtained uh, at the end of the season. So how, how basically to calculate the application rates of fertilizers when we use together with Ecostar? So we see that, um, on the, let's look at the table. We see that we, we see Ecostar with the different rates of application, one liter, uh, 1 liter, 1.2, 1.5. We see that uh, crop residues, ton per hectare. And uh, we see that the rates of application of uh, nitrogen fertilizers, uh, basically ammonium nitrate, uh, 132, rare, depending on the uh, ton of residues on the field and uh, ecosystem rate. So basically, uh, just if we have a look at the market, uh, the price market uh, of um, rare ammonium nitrate, 32, uh, it's, it's, it's changeable, but uh, I, I choose the price is 1,045 euro per metric ton of this fertilizer. And if you use a standard scheme of treating nutrient uh, of, of treating uh, residues on the field, uh, excluding cost of application, is uh, by using uh, 100 kilograms per hectare of, the, of these nitrogen fertilizers, it cost it can be cost uh, 104. 
0.5 euro. But if we uh, take a look at the uh, um, I recommend it. Sorry, sorry. Could you stop? Could you stop your, your microphone? Okay, so uh, if you just have a look at the recommended treatment uh, schema of uh, crop residues uh, with Equastern, uh, we see that for for the composition of residues, basically, we need uh, uh, not 100 kilograms, but uh, in, in several times less, like 30 kilo, kilograms per hectare, uh, the product echoes there, one liter and a half per hectare. And if you calculate the price, it will be uh, it will be to 47% uh, less uh, you need to spend uh, to treat your residues, to decompose, to prepare the soil for the next crop. So how to increase efficiency of the destructor? We can uh, we have several uh, options how the farmer can uh, can uh, basically do it. Uh, the first one is when we have Ecostern plus nitrogen fertilizers. Uh, and at the moment, uh, we know that not not so many farmers are uh, thinking about uh, nitrogen because of the price, but thinking about other options. So we can just uh, go to the next uh, variant when we can uh, apply Ecostern with a uh, uh, center product Humifriend, which based on a humic and fulvic acids and uh, some microorganisms, um, which help us to uh, allow to, um, say, to stimulate the plants to, to prepare the soil because of using Ecostern and to still stimulate the plant's development and, and growth by using uh, a product home friend. As a third option, when we can apply uh, Ecostern plus uh, sclerotid, uh, when we harvest sunflower, soybean, or rapeseed infected with the pathogens, uh, this combination would be perfect to uh, for for soil health and uh, to to decompose the plant residues and uh, to make uh, say the soil conditions much better for next crop. Uh, the fourth option is when we use Akestern for ground fix. In this, this option could be uh, nice when we when you want to decrease your amount of fertilizers uh, by uh, by changing your um, uh, changing products that you want to use because Akestern can uh, help uh, in, in case of soil health and uh, plant residues decomposition and ground fix for. Uh, mobil mobil mobilization of phosphorus and potassium in the soil uh, to and uh, helps to use your um, fertilizers more efficient. So you can decrease the standard rate uh, of fertilizers up to 30%. And the next, the last uh, option when we use Ecostern plus Azota Help, uh, in this case, uh, Azota Help uh, cause a role of nitrogen fixation. Uh, into the soil, which helps uh, plants uh, at the early stages grow uh, and development, and uh, also uh, together with Ecostern helps to uh, even accelerate uh, the composition of residues. So Ecostern also can be uh, applied with uh, other products such as uh, uh, Digistat. Uh, li liquid, li liquid fraction of uh, digestat, and uh, we have tested it uh, to see uh, the potential uh, uh, how how plants react to this combination, uh, how they what are the changes in corn plant hay, for example, depending of the of this composition, and we see uh, in comparison to the control uh, control uh, trial. We have when we use liquid fraction of Dagestat with a it's a five ton per hectare uh, plus Ecostern, plus Ecostern uh, two liter per hectare. We see that the changes are quite uh, visible and uh, can be uh, and, and efficient. Uh, in case of uh, plant height, in, in case of uh, amount of accumulated dry vegetation mass, uh, and also. Uh, as uh, this combination mostly uh, focused on the 
we also see the potential of it, of this combination to the dry uh, matter of roots, um, which is uh, which is quite a good uh, uh, results obtained uh, by by this combination of, of two products. Uh, Alexander, here I want also to add a bit uh, that we see different uh, influence of uh, Ecoster in these two options. So uh, when uh, just one ton of uh, digestat uh, was used, it's uh, not a big amount of uh, fertilizer. Uh, then uh, influence of uh, uh, Ecostern was first of all uh, directed to root uh, development. We can see that dry matter of roots increased uh, more and uh, vegetation mass uh, influence was uh, less. So uh, when there is a big uh, lack of uh, nutrients, uh, microbial products and Ecostern uh, helps plants to develop better root system to compensate uh, and make better growth in the uh, second part of uh, vegetation. However, in the second uh, example, when uh, five tons of uh, digistat was used here, uh, uh, the influence was uh, another because uh, here uh, plants uh, felt uh, sufficient amount of uh, nitrogen and uh, nutrients so it didn't develop a strong root system it didn't need it so uh, more influence was uh, gone to uptake of that uh, nitrogen by plant so plant uh, accumulate more uh, vegetation mass so but uh, in, in any way uh, microorganisms helps to uh, assimilate uh, nutrition uh, by plants uh, yeah, especially here talking about the biggest stuff. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Alexander, uh, for a brief introduction. If anybody have any questions about Ecostern, please uh, write them uh, to the chat and we will comment them. And now uh, I want to give a word to our my, another colleague, uh, Dmitry. Uh, Dmitry, can you turn on uh, the slides? Of course, one second, please. So we will talk about the uh, second part of uh, improving of fertilization of uh, the soil, about nutrient management and uh, the product for it, uh, ground fix. So, Dmitry. Uh, could you uh, tell me, uh, do you see? Yeah, uh, we see the okay. slides. Oh, uh, hello for everyone. Uh, and uh, I want to start from uh, our product uh, with uh, which called uh, ground fix. Uh, it is uh, microbial fertilizer, uh, phosphorus and potassium mobilizer and uh, nitrogen fixer. And uh, title of this uh, preparation has uh, up to one uh, and uh, one billion <laughs> yes one one billion and uh, you can see um, on on uh, this uh, uh, table table uh, you can see how uh, change uh, uh, change mobile phosphorus uh, in uh, soil after uh, using of uh, ground fix uh, and uh, we used uh, ground fix before uh, sowing, and uh, you can see uh, what amount of uh, mobile phosphor phosphorus we have uh, on sun flower. And uh, also we can uh, see uh, how change uh, uh, potassium after uh, using of uh, ground fix. And uh, as you can see, increase in uh, exchangeable uh, potassium from uh, 17%. Uh, it is uh, provided uh, as uh, preparation ground fix. And also you can uh, see uh, what increase in uh, yield can provide us uh, using of ground fix. Uh, it uh, can uh, be provided as uh, increase from uh, eight uh, 
percent for uh, our crop and uh, after effect of uh, this uh, preparation has uh, amount of uh, five percent uh, for increasing yield and uh, we have a lot of questions about ground fix and i show uh, our experience uh, about uh, few from all and if you have if you will have uh, more questions uh, we can discuss uh, them after our presentation and uh, how much fertilizers can be saved when we use uh, ground fix as you can see on uh, this photo when we uh, used uh, ground fix on uh, soybean and uh, as you can see we used uh, three liters of uh, ground fix plus uh, 100 uh, percent of uh, NPK. Uh, also, we use the ground fix with this amount of uh, NPK. Uh, ground fix was five liters per hectare. And also, we used uh, uh, three liters and five liters of ground fix with 70% uh, from uh, uh, full uh, rate of NPK. And I want to draw your attention on these four trials. As you can see, we have uh, better uh, economic effects uh, when we used uh, uh, five and three liters uh, of ground fix plus 70% of uh, full rate of uh, NPK. Uh, but uh, a little better uh, results was on uh, where on uh, uh, trials when we use uh, the same uh, rates uh, of ground fix with 100% of uh, amount of uh, NPK. Uh, and also we have the same situation uh, and the same trials on sunflower and on corn. And uh, I want to draw your attention on uh, increasing the yield because uh, I don't know, uh, sunflower, it is a very margin uh, crop. And uh, we used a uh, few types of uh, NPK. As you can see, for soybean, we used uh, 30, 60, 60. Uh, for sunflower, we used uh, 60, 60, 60 of NPK. And uh, for corn, we used 90, 90, 90. And does ground fix work equality uh, about question? Uh, does ground fix work uh, equally well on different types uh, of soil? And uh, I want to uh, tell about the uh, preparation shows uh, the highest effectiveness on low mid soil with a natural and slightly alkaline reaction of the environment. Uh, also. Uh, Ground fix has a positive effect, uh, is uh, also obtained on light acid soils. And ground fix mobilizer is warranted uh, to be effective on soil rich in phosphorus. And also, we have uh, a lot of experience uh, with this uh, preparation. And uh, we have a question from our clients. Uh, can it be used uh, together with fertilizers? Uh, yes, you can use uh, this preparation with uh, some fertilizers. As you can see, we, uh, you can uh, use this preparation with one LCF uh, for uh, other types of nitrogen fertilizer. But uh, in this case, I recommend you uh, to discuss uh, this application, this uh, usage with us before uh, before application, and you, uh, as you can see, we have uh, 
not good uh, experience because uh, we have a problem with uh, sustainable uh, when we used uh, Ukrainian preparation dear fun uh, with a rate 50 uh, liters per hectare uh, together with ground fixing uh, one ton mix with a rate how one and a half uh, liters per hectare as you can see, uh, in this case, when you use comp when you use uh, complex uh, prep uh, complex preparation like Diafan, we have uh, uh, a little other uh, recommend uh, recommendation for you. Uh, when you use this complex, uh, you can uh, you must uh, use this uh, tank mix uh, during one or up to two hours um, after mix and uh, also uh, as you can as you remember uh, we uh, thought about uh, effect uh, of ground fix and after effect uh, and we tried to uh, echo stern uh, before sowing of uh, sunflower in 2017. And we uh, had increase uh, to the uh, control 0.3 ton per hectare. And without, uh, again, application of ground fix before sowing winter wheat in 2018, we also had uh, this application in 2017 compared to us uh, increasing the yield uh, for uh, next crop uh, 0 0.29 tons per hectare. And uh, very often a question about when is, uh, is it better to apply ground fix? As you can see on this uh, small statistic from our uh, experience, uh, we used, uh, used the preparation with, uh, on uh, different uh, regions. Uh, it show us about uh, this preparation work in uh, different uh, soil conditions and uh, climate conditions, and also we used uh, different uh, methods of uh, application for soil cultivation, spring fertilization, uh, uh, basic soil tillage, uh, and basic soil tillage when we used eco stand together with uh, ground fix. And also, we show you um, uh, different, of, uh, different rate of ground fix per hectare. You can see uh, five liters, three liters, and uh, complex with uh, one and a half liters of ecosystem plus uh, three liters of ground fix. All these uh, applications uh, compared to us increasing the yield, as you can see, from 0 0.2 tons per hectare up to one and a half tons per hectare. Uh, these uh, trials uh, were uh, on winter wheat. Uh, next slide show us uh, what we have uh, preparation for uh, uh, seed treatments. And we have uh, microfren, it is a mycorrhizal product. And uh, uh, a little later, I uh, tell you a little more. And also uh, we have uh, preparation as a help and organic balance. Uh, what different uh, between uh, them? Microfriend, it is preparation for now for uh, treatment of seeds, uh, seed of uh, uh, cereals. If we're talking about uh, rapeseed, uh, will be better if you use uh, azoto help and organic balance. Uh, as you can see, uh, seed treatment can uh, provide us increase the area of nutrition absorption 
uh, improvement of plant resistance and increase in yield. Of course, increase on, in yield. And if we talk about as to help an organic balance, uh, uh, they can uh, provide uh, pro provide us uh, increase the amount of nitrogen in the rhizosphere, mobilize phosphorus and potassium, and reduce the amount of fertilizers. So about uh, microfran. Microfran it is mycorrhizal preparation and. Uh, uh, it has uh, multi complex of microorganisms uh, and uh, it based on uh, glomus. It is uh, fungi uh, which uh, compare us uh, uh, better root uh, system of uh, uh, winter cereals of uh, for. Uh, corn, sunflower, spring crops. Uh, you can see how uh, on, on this photo, you can see how uh, microfriend influence on root system uh, of different uh, crops. It is wheat, it is uh, corn on uh, uh, first uh, stage of development. It is corn of uh, late uh, phases of de de development. And uh, also you can see a photo from a microscope. And uh, also um, usage of uh, uh, this preparation can be provided uh increase in the absorption area of the root system and dry mass by uh from 17 up to 25 uh, percent also you can uh, check uh do you have uh, mycorrhiza, mycorrhiza on uh, root system of your crops or no uh, it is uh, root system without mycorrhiza on soybean and with mycorrhiza. And also you can see tubers on uh, root system. And also uh, using of uh, this preparation can be uh, provide uh, us uh, increasing the yield on winter wheat. Uh, is, uh, it is uh, Average increase in the yield on winter with, uh, as you can see, uh, 0.5 tons per hectare. Uh, on corn, uh, 0.93. On sunflower, 31, uh, 0.31. And uh, average increase in the yield, uh, this preparation uh, can provide from uh, 7%. And about other uh, preparation, azoto help and organic balance. Azoto help, uh, the main component of uh, the bacterium, azotobacter herococcum, as you can see. And uh, it is growth and development activators. And uh, on this uh, table, uh, you can see. Uh, uh, Oh, sorry. And uh, organic balance, it is universal preparations for seed treatment. And uh, uh, this preparation have a uh, few uh, type of, uh, types of microorganisms. As you can see, Bacillus subtilis, Azotobacter, Crococcum, Enterococcus, and Lactobacillus. And, uh, I want to show, I want to draw your attention on result for uh, uh, bioparameters of uh, crops when we used uh, organic balance for seed treatment with a rate zero, uh, one and a half liters per ton. And uh, also uh, what uh, increase in the yield uh, uh, it provide us. Sorry, 
And also, I want uh, to show you our experience about uh, our experience of uh, Azota Health. As you can see, we used uh, uh, Azota Health uh, in Germany uh, for winter wheat. Uh, and uh, we used uh, this preparation for uh, polyar treatment. And uh, this uh, application provide us uh, increasing the yield uh, 0 0.70 tons per hectare, 17 tons per hectare. And also we used uh, this preparation uh, in Ukraine for seed treatment of uh, winter wheat with a rate uh, one and a half liters per ton. And this application uh, provides us 0 0.42 tons per hectare. And also after our uh, experience trials uh, in Ukraine in Institute of Feed Research and Agriculture of uh, Odilia, uh, National Academy, Agrarian Academy. Uh, and also, uh, as you can see, uh, we used this preparation for uh, winter wheat, uh, for uh, polyar application, and for seed treatment. And in first and second uh, trials, we had uh, increasing the yield uh, on level uh, 0 0.71 and uh, 0. Uh, 81 tons per hectare. Uh, also, we have a lot of uh, questions about uh, methods and effects uh, when we use preparation for seed treatment. And uh, we uh, discuss your questions from all uh, right now. Uh, we want to show you our small uh, statistics of uh, uh, all our uh, trials. As you can see, we have a lot of trials on cereals and uh, uh, successful uh, trials from all uh, were 74 percent. And also, I want to draw your attention uh, on average increase in the yield uh, on cereals. Uh, it uh, were uh, 0 0.35 tons per hectare. The same situation on corn. Uh, we have uh, trials uh, 68, and uh, average increase in the yield was 0 0.53 tons per hectare. Also on sunflower, average increase in the yield was uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 tons per hectare. And on legumes, we have 0 0.33 average increase in the yield. And uh, also I want uh, to discuss with you about uh, two forms of uh, preparation mycoprene. Uh, if you, we're talking about uh, liquid form of microfriend, we recommend uh, seed pretreatment. Uh, you can uh, you can application this preparation for uh, seeds uh, before one or up to two hours before sowing. And uh, if we talk about dry form, we have a video on our YouTube channel. And uh, on this slide, I show you a uh, very important study of uh, uh, usage uh, this form of microprem. It is uh, this preparation has two package, it is vacuum package, and uh, package with uh, uh, better Zahist. Protection. Protection. Yes, sorry. Thank you very much, my colleagues. 
uh, second, uh, with better protection uh, against uh, sun. Mm, and uh, it is, uh, you can uh, application drive form of micro friend uh, just uh, on field uh, in your seed machine. So in machine, sorry. And how you can check uh, efficiency of microframe. Uh, you can uh, check uh, size of uh, crop. You can check size of uh, root system. And also you can check uh, in uh, laboratory met methods uh, when we when you use uh, microscope for uh, root system, uh, as we uh, to show you on this photo. And uh, very often the question about how long uh, does mycorrhiza last in the soil? We have uh, uh, three position positions of. Uh, for this uh, for answer and uh, the formation of mycorrhiza is not a, a intentional process it takes about 30 days from seed germination to full functioning uh, functioning of the mycorrhizal uh, apparatus i mean about uh, net gardens net uh, preservation of mycorrhiza in uh, facilitated by corded crop uh, rotation and use of sidereal crops. And uh, last one, it is mycorrhiza destruction is caused by use of anhydrous ammonia and uh, ammonia solution, deep blowing and soil compaction and other. And uh, for this uh, preparation, we also compat uh, compatibility uh, trials with uh, chemical agents. Uh, as you can see, we uh, can recommend you use. We can't recommend you uh, to use uh, microfriend with uh, preparation which based on these active substances and uh, with uh, fertilizers and if we if you have uh, some prepara uh, chemi chemical preparations uh, with uh, other active substances you can discuss it with us and uh, during a short time we can uh, check uh, compatibility uh, my friend with this active uh, substances and uh, also i want to draw your attention uh, for a very important state of winter plants uh, uh, at the end of the autumn vegetations vegetation oh. if if we're talking about winter rapeseeds uh, i think a very important uh, size uh, of plant before winter. Uh, it must be, uh, it is optimum. Uh, it must be from 10 up to uh, 12 uh, leaves. And uh, if we're talking about winter cereals, uh, optimum plant size before wintering must be uh, three or four shots and uh, well developed developed uh, root system and uh, we have uh, different methods uh, methods uh, of uh, leveling plants if we talk about uh, different uh, growth system if we have integrated growth system we can use uh, preparation which uh, stimulate uh, stimulate development and which can inhibit or stop plant development. But if we talk about uh, organic growth system, we have preparation uh, which have uh, effects only uh, for stimulate plant development. And 
it is uh, in the band uh, with uh, region, with countries, with uh, your climate and soil conditions. And also a uh, very important question uh, left uh, about moisture of soil. Uh, for growth stimula uh, stimulation uh, action, we recommend uh, this preparation. Uh, as you already know, which you already know, it, it uh, are uh, they are uh, azoto help with a rate 0 0.15 liters per hectare, organic balance uh, with a rate 0 0.25 liters per hectare and liposome uh, with a rate 0 0.3 liters per hectare. And also for uh, general uh, health of uh, plants, I recommend you um, uh, to use a small amount of the preparation, which you base it on a complex of micro elements. Uh, and if we talk about uh, rapeseed, you can uh, add a little uh, rate of uh, boron. And also, uh, I can recommend you uh, for usage uh, our preparation, MycoHelp and uh, Phytoxid or Phytobact. Uh, it is second name of this preparation. Uh, and this preparation, uh, can uh, to increase the immune, uh, immune resistance of plants to the potential development of diseases. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's all uh, from my uh, experience. And thank you very much for your attention. If you have uh, questions, we can discuss it uh, maybe right now. And uh, thank you, Dmitro, and uh, thank you, Alexander, uh, for the presentation. And I uh, just want to check, uh, we have a special guest today, uh, Alexander Chumak uh, from uh, a farm in the south of Ukraine. Uh, so are you here with us, Alexander? Yes, hello. Uh, I don't have some presentation for today because I was in the trip. And so I have uh, some swift commentary, and if you have some questions, I will answer it. Yeah, first so, of all, uh, thank you for joining and uh, agreeing to communicate with us uh, today. So this uh, webinar is for our international uh, partners, international audience. I see here our partners from uh, Czech Republic, Hungary, Romania, uh, from Serbia, from some other states. So they are all interested what is happening in uh, Ukraine and uh, actually uh, they as well, uh, especially in East Europe, what, what I see, uh, look on the Ukrainian technologies and on the experience of Ukrainian farmers, uh, because, you know, uh, Ukrainian farmers are quite open to some innovations. And that's why we always have what to share. So could you please introduce in a few words uh, your company and your experience? I own two companies in north of Odessa region. It's... Uh, total about 3.5 thousand of hectares we are 100 percent no-till using cover crops and also also using uh, injection of uh, bio chem bio fertilizers injection of uh, classic chemical fertilizers uh, and right now we are in the status of war with Russia. And there is a lot of problem here. One of main problem is that the prices for grain are very low. Prices for logistics are rocket high. And the same for the fertilizer, same for the chemicals and so on. So right now, if, if before in previous years, we was looking for some steps to upgrade our uh, profits. Right now we are made all that we can and push beyond the limit because there is no one 
no possible ways to sustain the profitability in this uh, environment like we have right now. So uh, our experience that we are we are lucky that we are on no kill. So less less resources needed to sustain the uh, crops. Uh, let's uh, less oils, less diesel, less chemicals, and so on. Less uh, equipment. Uh, usual we are. This years we are coming from big amount of fertilizers to small amount of fertilizers, and right now this year, next year, we are planned to leave only fifteen percent of total usual volume of fertilizers because there is no possible way to sustain profits without it so uh, previous years we was every year on every hectare of our land we sold uh, cover crops the, before that we inoculated the seeds with uh, mycorrhizal and uh, phosphor uh, mobilization agents uh, for uh, the two center is a product like ground fix and uh, micro friend also several times we are used ecostern but not with the goal of uh, decomposed straw but with the goal of uh, get rid of uh, some residual uh, illness on the crops because we don't need our straw to be decomposed we need it as much as many as we can achieve so only goal for us for using ecostem is to sterilize in biological way from the bad biological evidence and also uh, we in our test seen but specialist of the two center will can describe it more exactly. We seen that when we use an ecosystem on the fields uh, with uh, herbicide residuals like uh, clear field, we have much uh, better development of winter wheat for example or winter barley its uh, plants are more vigorous and in the end after two years after year lighting we seen uh, yields uh, rise about maybe three to five uh, 0 0.3 0 0.5 tons per hectare of the yield it was uh, good enough experience for us so but we are trying to get rid of clear field at all so for us it's interesting experience but we don't use it because we don't use the clear field now but it's very it's very good that it works in such way also when we seed in the cash crops we are inoculating them with uh, mycorrhizal. If it's pulses, we inoculating it with uh, inoculants for a exact type of plant. For peas, it's I don't remember right now, like in English, but uh, and also we are using uh, phosphor, kali, kalium, uh, for for potash mobilization agents and this we are using uh, together with uh, liquid fertilizers that we are using in the row when we are seeding after that we don't use any fertilizers at all also we are experimenting uh, right now with the johnson seal composts effects but it's besides uh, our experience with betusa also, the tool center, we start our uh, 
work with Betul Center from the liposome agent, uh, liposome glue agent, uh, which helps us to get rid of problems uh, uh, at the time of harvest of peas. So uh, if before this practice, uh, we had about three to five days uh, for harvesting uh, peas. Right now, for us, uh, Expanding this time to 10 to 14 days is good enough because we don't see any problems with uh, shattering. And so even uh, several times uh, in previous years, we had uh, heavy rains after the start of harvest and still we have enough time to get these fields to the uh, harvesters and not very big losses after that. So it's good practice and it's working absolutely. Also, it's working on oil seed rapes, but last years there is a lot of uh, varieties that uh, have no problems with shattering at all. So for the oil seed rape, it's uh, good, but only for old varieties. For the pea, it's very good. So that's all that I can tell you right now. So if you have some questions, I will be ready to answer it. Alexander, thank you for interesting uh, introduction and uh, story about uh, our cooperation. Uh, we really are proud of Ukrainian farmers and we initiate uh, plenty of projects, uh, one in spring about uh, different stories of Ukrainian farmers and uh, one now. Uh, during uh, the day of independence, we also published some uh, stories and uh, really in such conditions to continue work is uh, critical in the agri sector and uh, yeah, and farmers in Ukraine do do their best to, to keep uh, the industry alive. And uh, about the no-till and uh, for what period you are using no-till? Uh, uh, repeat please. Uh, about no-till, uh, how many years you I no-till? For now, it's short years for 100% no till in our, in our uh, land. Yeah, so uh, again, uh, I see uh, also a big potential in this technology, especially in uh, dry regions. Uh, we have uh, plenty of customers in uh, Bulgaria, Romania, uh, who using this technology. Now it's more, pop get more and more popular in Poland, uh, in uh, Lithuania. Uh, no, so uh, this do help uh, in uh, dry conditions, this do help in uh, difficult like uh, relief with hills. This do help to preserve some moisture in the soil. This do help to improve uh, soil structure. Uh, so it's uh, probably the future more popular technology in Ukraine as well. And but uh, of course, this also brings some uh, difficulties, some uh, special uh, techniques is uh, needed, uh, some change in technology and uh, also, some uh, problems could uh, be could, could come. Also, one you mentioned three years that uh, in uh, these uh, conditions, when there is a strong uh, uh, ground, uh, it's a uh, moisture in between. It's good for good uh, uh, plant for our plants, culture plants. But also in these conditions, some uh, pathogens could develop, and uh, for us, it's important to. Uh, create some competition uh, with uh, good <laughs> good bacteria and fungi uh, and uh, not to allow them to cause uh, big problems to plants. And uh, of course, uh, also, uh, no, in discussions with other partners uh, who have no-till, uh, they also mentioned that uh, some somewhere this uh, contact uh, zone with, with uh, soil, uh, it's also important maybe to uh, accelerate some somewhere organic matter uh, accumulation sequestration in the technology where ecosterin could help no actually in uh, in long term no till could uh, be beneficial for soil properties uh, together with uh, biologicals you know the longest no till you have and the more stru structure structured structure structured and uh, healthy your soil is the less you need any bioinoculants because yeah. it's already good enough. The, yes. In the uh, in the yield and very tiered by uh, equipment soils, the 
profit and effects of bioinoculants are much more seen that in no till yeah, except even in in the short term but in the long term there is, there is a different very difficult to see any difference but there is no some we need some years to go to the long no till so for, for the start is very good yeah so uh i uh, agree it's similar to philosophy of organic uh, agriculture where also you preserve biodiversity including microorganisms in the soil and for uh, no-till uh, we also have a big partner in uh, bulgaria for example they have like hundred, hundred, more than hundreds of thousands of hectares and uh, especially in this uh, year with critical uh, weather conditions with very dry uh, conditions where for example in moldova our partners mentioned that almost 80 percent of corn was just cultivated because of uh, they were burned in uh, bulgaria the yield is uh, more or less like 50 percent less than uh, previous years but uh, what they do mention that uh, using uh, microbial products both like uh, for literally both uh, for soil enrichment uh, uh, they somehow helps plants to survive in these uh, difficult conditions uh, what are your observations maybe uh, during this uh, year? How your fields looks like uh, during this dry uh, year? This year we have very hard drought. And from the beginning of the year, we had weather, very dry autumn with no uh, rains at all. All rains ended in August. And there was, there was nothing until December. After that, we received uh, maybe 150 millimeters of rain until now, including uh, only 15 millimeters uh, per this summer. 10 of them was two weeks ago. So it very hard drought, something like we had in uh, 2020 but uh, we have no deal with cover crops and so on and for us uh, as i see we come through this drought and we have some of course decreasing of our yield but every field have yields good enough it's not uh, if we had uh, prices like they had right now in the world, it was it will be very good uh, profit. So for corn, for example, I think it will be five to six tons per ha per hectare. With our standard in good year, eight to nine. And for the sunflower, I I think that we will have something like two. 0.5 tons of sunflower, but we are growing exceptionally confectionary one, so the yield is lower, standard yield and standard for in good year is like something like three tons per, high, per hectare. So we are losing some yield, but not dramatically. And the second thing that we are use, used to much less uh, fertilizers this year because of less money to spend on them and high prices because at the start of war there, there, there was not any chances to buy something because we don't have any money and uh, can sell something can transport something in our lands and so on so on so in this environment is good enough i think Yes, it's quite uh, very even impressive uh, figures in uh, such a dry year, in such a year with so much limitations, you get uh, quite uh, sufficient uh, yields. And indeed, uh, if uh, prices in Ukraine are like uh, everywhere and we don't lose so much on the logistics, uh, that would be a very good year for uh, Ukrainian farmers as well. But we, we have what, what we have. Uh, you mentioned you use some uh, infro technologies, right, uh, for yes. fertilization. Yes. And uh, again, you use so much less uh, fertilizers, including this year, and uh, still get some su sufficient yields. 
uh, did you uh, what about the soil soil quality uh, and some amount of nutrients in the soil do you uh... we are using uh, we use some tests years uh, in the previous years it was three three times that we are testing coral fields uh, last time was 2000 2018 and we have some no, standard uh, soils with ph about seven to eight depend on the field uh, low to medium uh, nitrogen uh, low to medium uh, phosphor phosphorus and very high in potash also we have deficit on zinc and uh, s i don't remember how it in english uh, sulfur mm -hmm. uh, so it's not any um, very good soils it was and after that we are using a lot of sequestering by cover crops and as we see uh, it has some effects yeah indeed and what about organic matter just for general understanding 2.5 uh, uh, to 3.5 it's more or less uh, average cannot yeah, say that I, it's good to, yes average feels not good not bad I see. Also interesting that uh, having uh, not so high uh, content of uh, nitrogen and uh, phosphorus in the soil, uh, still you have a uh, good effect from uh, uh, covered crops, from uh, mobilizers like uh, ground fix and mycorrhiza. And uh, yeah, it's a very interesting and uh, demonstrative experience for us. So thank you uh, for being partners with us for belief to btu center and uh, for this interview as well thank you so uh, thank you again and uh, yeah uh, then uh, we will uh, uh, end up with uh, our webinar as we don't have any uh, other questions in the chat uh, i would uh, like to Thanks to all our guests uh, today and to those who are, were looking at us on uh, social uh, networks. And uh, indeed, uh, this uh, season is uh, very different from what we had before because of uh, the uh, war which Russia started in Ukraine. And uh, this caused uh, uh, like changes and difficulties in uh, like on all the worlds uh, on the world uh, agriculture. However, Ukrainian agriculture is uh, main, <laughs> uh, how to say, no, feels it uh, very much. And uh, here again, I want to uh, say special word to the bravery of our agrarians who continue work. And uh, even though they don't get uh, any big, big profits at all, even working sometimes without profits, they still uh, work, they grow uh, crops and uh, helps uh, overcome uh, food crisis in the world. And uh, also to help uh, overcome this crisis, we recommend and propose our partners to implement uh, sufficient and uh, biological tools, biological products to, for soil improvement, for uh, improvement of uh, seed germination and uh, growth during vegetation. Uh, our product, most of our products are already available in the European Union. Uh, you can contact us uh, for further information. We would be glad to uh, to help you in uh, your technologies. So uh, that's all for today. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice have a nice time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye.